The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. In 1979, a high schooler by the name of Jeff McCord started creating a game based on a Dungeons & Dragons campaign he ran previously. It was one of the first computer games to feature randomised dungeons and a fog of war that hid parts of the world you hadn't visited yet. So here we have Sword of Fargoal. As with other roguelikes of its time, there were no extra lives. Once you died, you were dead, and you had to start over. The Commodore 64 conversion of the VIC-20 Classic was published in 1983 by Epix. It features the same roguelike gameplay of the original, with a few small enhancements. Once you get the basics sorted, Sword of Fargoal is pretty straightforward to play. And while the list of button commands in the manual might initially look daunting, there's only a couple that you will need to use for the majority of your time with the game. So here, we're going to take a closer look at the game and its history, and get you all up to speed with this classic C64 Dungeoneering adventure, in a sort of storyish way. One of my favourite games growing up, I spent literally hours playing through this, so I'm going to enjoy this video and hopefully it will enlighten you to go and play it for yourself. After all, the kingdom depends on you. You see, Ulmer, the evil wizard, has used trickery and magic to gain control of the Sword of Fargoal. For centuries, that sword has protected the land and allowed the people to prosper. Hidden deep in Ulmer's dungeon, the sword and its powers are useless. Rumours about the location of the sword abound, and although you have questioned many wayfarers and thieves of what you have learnt, you believe little. You do know that the dungeon is nearly vertical, cut into the depths of the mountain. Its 20 levels each consist of a few rooms, winding passages and scattered stairways. Somewhere below the 14th level, the Sword of Fargoal is hidden. Getting to the lower levels, however, will be no easy task. Ulmer not only has booby traps in the floor and ceiling, but he also has his evil minions scattered throughout the dungeon, not as guards, but as murderers of anyone who might be so foolhardy as to try and rescue the sword. No great warrior yourself, you begin your quest knowing that you must learn from every battle by gaining experience points. On nearly every level, you will find a small temple where you can make sacrifices to the gods, hide from evil warriors and monsters, and heal your wounds. Throughout the dungeon, you will find gold, which will be sacrificed to the gods. In the Sword of Far Goal, probably more aptly named, as the 20th level is certainly a Far Goal. Each level is covered in a sort of yellow mist, which only disappears as you pass to reveal the layout of that level. You can almost imagine this as simulating your character making a map of the dungeon. At the beginning of the game and between levels, two screens will flash. The first shows your experience points, experience level, maximum hits, battle skill, dungeon level, and total monsters slain. Experience points control your experience level, which in turn sets the maximum number of hit points you have and will also increase your skill in battle. The second screen shows all the spells and items you are carrying. Hit points are taken from you during battles and when you run into a trap, but can be regained by resting up and avoiding any encounters. Experience points are gained by sacrificing gold and slaying monsters. As you progress through the game, you will find larger stashes of gold, and you will also fight tougher and more valuable monsters. So it's sometimes worth daring to fight monsters of a higher level in order to gain experience faster, but that's always a gamble especially as by level 10, some monsters can wipe out your hit points and kill you with a single blow. As you move, you may find yourself having to pause periodically for a growl sound. This indicates that there are monsters moving somewhere on that level of the dungeon. Once the growl passes, you'll be able to move again. If you hear more growls, or one much longer growl, there are a lot more monsters. Your enemies come in both human and monster types. 
Human types are capable of picking up and using items in the dungeon and using them against you, while monsters have more primitive, aggressive behaviour. Humans can easily be distinguished by the way their sprite appears to be wielding a weapon. Don't wait around, because unlike a lot of modern roguelikes, Sword of Fargoal unfolds in real time, meaning that if you just stand in place, the monsters will continue to move and may even attack you if they get close enough. This is bad, because if a monster is the one to initiate combat, you're unable to escape, even if things are going badly for you. So yeah, unfortunately, there is no pause option in the game. However, if you have a teleport spell in your inventory, you can quickly cast it to escape by pressing T on the keyboard. What you should do is take the initiative and always be the one to start battles by moving onto monsters. This will begin an automatic process where you and your opponent take turns bopping one another on the head with a variety of entertaining growls and grunts, and eventually one of you will fall over. If it's the monster, you get experience points and can proceed on your way. Using staircases going up or down will manoeuvre you through the dungeons, and exploring each level thoroughly is important as you will need the spells that are hidden throughout the dungeon and more importantly seek out the enchanted weapons. This is a very important item for tackling monsters on later levels, so you'd be wise to seek these out on each of the earlier dungeons. Enchanted weapons increases damage and are accumulative and permanent, but a rare find, so definitely not guaranteed to be on every level of the dungeons. In fact, there were times where I couldn't find any. Unfortunately, there is no way to tell the difference between a spell and a trap. So if your hit points are very low, rest before you take a chance of uncovering what could be hidden behind these items. However, sometimes if you're moving pretty fast or trying to evade a monster, you'll inevitably walk straight into one anyway. Good luck with that. Spells can make you invisible, allow your hit points to increase faster, teleport you to another location on the same level, shield you from the blows of monsters during an attack, illuminate the maze around you and let you drift gently down holes in the floor, sometimes bypassing several levels. You will also find potions to restore your hit points, magic sacks that allow you to carry more gold, and beacons that can magically transport you to the nearest temple. Healing potions will be used automatically if your hit points drop below zero, but be sure you actually have one in your inventory before relying on this. Initially, you can only carry 100 gold at a time, but with each magic sack you discover, you will be able to carry an extra 100. Gold pieces should be cashed in at the cross-shaped temples on each level, where they convert to experience points. Well, that's pretty much everything you need to know to play Sword of Far Goal. The rest you can find out for yourself. There's a challenging quest ahead of you, for sure, but it's a compelling and highly addictive one that will keep you busy for quite some time. All you need to know is that each level is randomly generated for each game, and you always start at level 1, so it's pretty much a different layout each time you play, which is good, as it means you'll want to return once more, and also, you'll never need to draw a map either. Give it a whirl. Thanks for watching, guys. What did you think of Sword of Far Goal? Were you, like myself, a massive fan? Or did you find this game repetitive? Let me know in the comments section, and please don't forget to hit the like button. If you're enjoying the nostalgia, then please consider subscribing to the channel and joining me to revisit some classic Commodore 64 and Commodore Amiga games we remember from our youth. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, bye for now.